Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All the praise, God. All the glory. All the honor. God, in the name of Jesus. Ah, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. God, I thank you for these that have gathered. I thank you for those, oh, Lord God, that are on the prayer line. I thank you today, God. Lord, for allowing us this time to share. This time, oh, Lord God to come together with one voice, one praise of worship, God. We thank you. Hallelujah. And God, we give you all the thanksgiving tonight. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Come on and give him a praise if you would. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for this evening. Thank God for blessing us one more time. Amen. I thank the Lord. Amen. For this is a day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I thank God for his loving kindness, for his continued grace and favor that he shows towards me. Amen. And I thank God for those of you that are here. Amen. Giving God praise for your lives as well. Amen. We're going to, uh, tonight, I just want to do just a, a brief a review of what we uh, received on Sunday, which <laughs> um, there were some things that were said in the message that that I didn't catch as it related to me personally. Till today, I had an opportunity to sit with uh, Pastor Cheryl, and we were talking, and as she began to uh, to share with me what the Lord had spoken to her to her when I invited her to speak on this past Sunday. She said immediately after we got off the phone, the Holy Spirit began to say, after 70 years are accomplished. And she said, it just kept going over and after 70 years. After she says, and I know that verse, I know that verse somewhere, somewhere. And then of course, Jeremiah 29 is when the Lord speaks of after the 70 years. And you know, I sit and I listen to that message on Sunday and I enjoyed that word on Sunday, but not one time did it even cross my mind that the 70 years that she was talking about as the Lord gave to her was my 70 years. It's a, <laughs> it was my birthday weekend, my 70th birthday, and not one time did the thought occur to me that the Lord was speaking. Now, what is so, what is so interesting about this is that I've said to you all over the last several weeks how happy I am and how, how free I feel and, and, and what God is doing in my life. And then last night, I had a conversation with my sisters, and, and one of them said to me, Curly said to me, she said, Al, she says, I... She says, you look like you are very happy. She says, you look like you've been born again. She, she says, she says I, I don't know what it is. She said, you just look. And I said, I am happy with the exception of some weight that I need to get rid of. I said, but I am happy. She said, well, you're just fat and happy, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, and I feel that enthusiasm and I feel that excitement. But when Pastor Cheryl 
began to speak to me today and shared with me the word, when she was sharing with me the word, you know that sometime, and I'm, I'm sure that all of you that are in here can, can attest to this, is that sometimes we're in a place where we feel like we've reached our limit, yet we are being fulfilled. We've reached our limit, but we are fulfilled. We, we've reached our limit, um, and, and all of our needs are being met because we hold fast to the, to the passage that says, God, my God, shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory through Christ. And so we're, we're being fulfilled. We are, we are satisfied with where we are. We've got no complaints. But guess what? There is more. There is more. And, and sometimes we don't recognize that there is more. But Jesus did say, I come that you might have life and have it what? More abundant. Oh, my, 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 my. See, we're, we're good with the, with the, oh, glory, with the, with the supply being met. We're good with that. It's good to not have to beg for bread. What the psalmist said, my, I was once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen my seed beg for bread. Never, never seen the righteous forsaken or my seed beg bread. It's good when we don't have to beg for bread. It's good when we know that our needs, but sometimes, sometimes, amen, God does that for a purpose. So when we're looking at, when we look at Jeremiah 29, matter of fact, let's look at that real quick because, you know, this is something that I've shared many times. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Thank you, God. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to him, to him. Thank you, Lord. If you go to Jeremiah 29, and... And at verse 4, thank you, Lord. Verse 4 says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Okay, whom I have caused to be carried away. Now look at this. Just because you've been relocated from one place to another doesn't negate the fact that you are still God's chosen. So God's going to take care of you wherever you are. Oh my. God's going to take care of you where, wherever you are. You may not be in the house per se, but wherever you are, God's going to take care of you. Mm. One of the reasons why he's going to do that is because it's important that, that he has witnesses throughout the earth. It's important that the Lord has witnesses wherever, wherever witness is needed. God may, God, may, uh, God may cause you to go into an environment that you have not been mentally prepared for. But spiritually, you are just what is needed at that particular point in time. So he says, I'm going to cause you to be carried away from Jerusalem, the place where you feel comfortable, the place where you feel welcome. I'm going to cause you to be carried from that place to Babylon, to a place of discomfort, to a place where you're not welcome, to a place where they don't know you and they don't, they don't particularly care for you. But when you get there, I want you to act like you own the place. Hmm. He said, because what I want you to do when you get there, I want you to build houses. When you're talking about building a house, you're talking about establishing yourself. Oh, my, my. See, we don't have to. This is why I love Sister Daneen's testimonies. Because her testimonies always encourage us that I can make it. 
It, it all, her, her testimony is always encouraging. You know, I look forward to, to Sister Damien's November testimonies. <laughs> I, and this year, and this year we've been blessed, amen, to have Sister Damien Cruz testimonies. Because she told the Lord she wanted to travel. And she didn't have the means for it. But how many cruises have you been on this year so far? Okay, so you got one already and one plan. Plus, plus you, you, you traveled to, uh, the, to Georgia at least once. Twice? Twice. Twice. Louisiana. Louisiana. Myrtle, Bre Myrtle Beach. And Virginia. and Virginia. Now, how many of us have been, have been on the road that much this year already? Besides you, Danae. <laughs> Okay, so he says, so he says, don't act like you're in Babylon. No, you are mine, and when you know whose you are, he says, establish yourself where you are. So build houses, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take you wives and beg at your sons and daughters. You all know the verse, okay? So the bottom line, what he is saying to us is that when you are in this place, which in your going there, it was not a place that you desired to be. But remember, God directs, God orders our steps. And when God orders, it's not for us to, to, to kick and scream about where he is sending us to go. Because it's for his glory once we get there and do what it is that he has commanded us to do. So he said, wherever you are, you go and you establish yourself. Now, here's one thing, though, that we've got to pay, that we've got to take notice of. Is that in that place of Babylon, there were boundaries. The boundaries were set by the Babylonians. However, because they were in this place, doing what God has called them to do. Remember, he said, don't go and act like slaves, but no, go and live your best life as best as you can within the confines of the boundaries that have been established, which you don't have anything to do with. You know, we were talking, uh, again, Pastor Cheryl and I, we were talking today, and I showed her around the food pantry. And when I took her in, into the to pantry area and showed her the freezer, she was in amazement. Because I want to let you all know, uh, some that may not be aware, that as far as the food pantry goes, we are most blessed. There are food pantries all across the country that are struggling. We are not only not struggling, but, but as of yesterday, we picked up another account for another 11 stores. We don't have room enough. Oh, my, my, has anybody ever heard that? Would not have room enough to receive? We don't have room enough to receive everything that's come. And if I took you back there right now, you would be in amazement, but even more so because as of yesterday, Yesterday was when we placed our order for our monthly allotment, which will probably come next week. Where are we going to put it? Okay, so, so we're not confined when we look at this pandemic that we have gone through as a nation. We've not been confined by that. We've not been, uh, we've not been defined by that. We are blessed. There are many churches that are still not open. Still not open. But God has blessed us to not only be open, but to be a place where people can come and receive food donations. Be a place where people can come and receive COVID vaccines. Uh, be a place where people can come and, and donate blood. Be a place, amen, where, where, where people can come and next week we'll look at the, back, the book bag giveaway. God has blessed us tremendously because we've learned how to function in and operate in the system that we've been made to be a part of. Not defined by the system, 
but defined by who God is, amen, and doing those things that God has ordained us to do. And because we are all a part of this movement that's taking place right now, amen, I believe that the same blessing, the same uh, 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 command, the, the same, the same uh, uh, anointing falls upon everyone who is a part of this ministry. But we have to walk in it. We have to walk in it. We, we can't be fearful of what the news is saying. Amen. It, it, it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't easy for those, the, for those who have large tanks on their vehicles to pull up and say, fill it up, and, and then have to dole out $85, $100. What Deacon Tom, Deacon Tom told us uh, one week here, what was it? I think it was like $400. And that's for him to work. But praise be to God, amen, that $85 this week is down to 50 <laughs> You know, but why worry about it? You can't worry about it. There's nothing that you can do to change it. And that's why, again, the Lord says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. All we need to do is be who we are in the moment. Who are we in the moment? We are God's chosen people. We are God's peculiar people. We are God's royal priesthood. Thank you, Lord, that we should show forth his praise. And we're going to continue to show forth his praise. We're going to continue to glorify him. We're going to continue to praise and magnify his holy name. Why? Because even though there are boundaries and we, we may, others are feeling confined, we're not confined. No, we're being a witness. That's why Romans 12 says that we're not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove, oh, it's proving time. It's prove whether it is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. We are here to prove that God is still able even when the economy says it ain't so. Thank you, Lord. Oh, there's enough money in the world, amen, to take care of every soul on it, on the planet of this earth. Twice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as, as, as we were discussing and I began to, to look at this and really begin to understand what it is that the Lord is saying to, to me in this season, which I believe what he is saying to me, amen, is for the house as well, is that, is that he says after 70 years, let's go on a little bit further. Go down to verse 8. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Now, what he is referring to is that if you go back a few chapters and read, there were those prophets who were, who were contradicting what Jeremiah had said. And they were saying, no, 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 it's not like that. It's not like that, no, no, God is not telling us to go into to, uh, to, 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 to captivity. And they, and they mocked him by, by putting yokes upon them as they told the story. And Jeremiah took the yokes and he broke them. We have to, again, understand that everywhere we go, whatever it is that we do, however it is that God leads, God knows the end from when? The beginning. God knows the end from the beginning. God knows what's coming next. So we are never going to be caught unaware as long as we are walking in the Spirit. We're never going to be caught unaware if we're walking by faith and trusting God, regardless of what it looks like, regardless to what the economy, the economists say, 
regardless to what the gas pump, regardless to, to how, I don't care how high the price of, of milk and eggs and, and bread goes up, amen, we will never be without as long as we're trusting God. I know you've noticed your grocery bill being a whole lot more than what it used to be. But guess what? Don't worry about that. That's not the focus. That's not the focus that God wants us to have. Thank you, Lord. Okay? But look at what he says. He says, don't worry about the forecast that comes from those who don't know me. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Don't worry about the forecast. All, all, prophet, all prophets do is forecast. They're forecasting. He says, so don't worry about the forecast of, of CNN and MSNBC. You know, don't, don't worry about the forecast of the Wall Street Journal and, and the Washington Post. Don't, don't worry about the forecast, amen, and, and what the Fed's saying the, and the interest going to Don't worry about the forecast. He said, because as long as you are walking by faith and not by sight, I'm going to take care of you. Amen. We see it time and time again. The widow woman that Elijah went to, well, she says, I'm going to make this meal. I got one, enough meal to make one cake, and I'm going to make this cake for me and my son, and we're going to eat it and die. But the prophet said, oh, well, make mine first. And she did not die. Her son did not, not, not die, not immediately. But because she put it in the atmosphere, God did allow her to see. Now, isn't that amazing? Look at this. God says, I've instructed the widow woman to feed you. Elijah went to her and said, make me a cake. First, before you take care of yourself, take care of me first. And the Bible says that her meal barrel did not go empty. Neither did the cruise of oil go empty until the time set that the Lord would, would uh, begin to do a new thing. At that point in time, her son died. And the prophet went and he prayed and he raised the son back to life. And it was only then that she made the confession of faith. She says, now by this, I know that you are a man of God. Well, why didn't she know at the beginning? See, because it's so easy for us to be, to be uh, uh, deceived by our environment. It's so easy for us to be deceived by what we see, by what's going on around us, as opposed to the voice of the Lord that speaks to us. Thank you, Lord. So if we go down to verse 10. He said, for thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. So as I shared in the beginning, it wasn't until today that I even realized that the message that was being delivered on Sunday was a message that God had given Pastor Cheryl for me directly in that 70. God did not allow me to see it or even to get the full interpretation of it until today. But if we remove the 70, if we remove the 70 years and replace it with after a period of time, after an appointed time. See, in all of our lives, there is an appointed time where God will have us in a place where we are confined. He'll have us in a place where we are confined, yet we are not restricted from being who we are called to be. There, there is a period of time where there are boundaries that have been established, not by us, amen, but by the system in which we are a part of. But yet and still, God will empower us and enable us to be who it is that he has called for us to be. So that in that period of time, we, we begin to flourish and to grow beyond our imagination. <laughs> 
We begin to flourish and to grow, amen, beyond what we, but beyond our expectation as long as we are applying the word of God to our lives and we're watching God move in like we've never seen him move before. But when that period of time has ended, the Lord says, I'm going to revisit you. And at that time, I'm going to remove the boundaries. Oh, glory to God. There was a period of time in the church, amen, when, when everybody was reading the prayer of Jabez. God, enlarge my territory. Oh, glory to God. Ah, Hallelujah. God is ready. God at that point in time when he removes those boundaries, Missionary Williams, he is saying now it's time for you to enlarge your territory. Now it's time for you to be ready to stretch out, but you're not ready to go there until you learn how to command the space where you are. Oh my. Why is that important? Because in the beginning, God said to Adam, he says, I want you, I want you to have authority over all that I have created. I want you to replenish. I want you, look at this, to establish yourself in this space that I've given to you. Once we've established ourselves in the space that God has given to us, then he knows that he can trust us to have more space to occupy. Job is a perfect example for us in that he he commanded the space that God had given to him and God knew that he can trust him. And at the end of God's ordeal, at, at the end of Job's ordeal, God, what did God do? He removed the boundaries from Job's life and he said that he was blessed double after. Thank you, Lord. Oh, what comes after? Thank you, Lord. What, what is your after going to look like? Thank you, God. What what is your after going? Or do you even think about your after? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do you even even take the time to think? I'm not talking about afterlife. I'm talking about after, amen, right here on earth. What, What does your happily ever after look like? Thank you, Lord, God. Can you even imagine what your, what your happily ever after can look like? And, and not look at, not look at the, 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 the walls of your fish tank. But know, that be, but, but know that if you just move out, if you just step out on faith, Amen, that there's more, there's more out there than you could ever imagine. Thank you, Lord. When we begin to do what it is that God is, uh, you know, I'm just, again, I'm, ex- I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. I shared this testimony on the prayer line. Amen. And uh, I, I don't remember if I shared it on Sunday or not, but you see we, the sign has come down and we're getting ready to put up a digital sign. But before we could put up the digital sign, we needed to get a permit. I went to get the permit and they said, well, the permit's only $50. They said, but we need a signed drawing. A sign, whenever they ask for a signed drawing, they're asking for an engineer or an architect to sign off on the drawing that you're presenting. And see, every time an engineer or an architect put their signature on a drawing, they get a few hundred dollars just for their signature. So we called the sign company and said, we need a signed drawing. They said, no problem, we can take care of that for you. However, we have to hire an engineer to sign the drawing. The drawing's already been drawn. But we need to take it to somebody to sign it. And when we take it to them to sign it, they're going to ask for $400. So, okay, well, we didn't have that in our budget. So I went to the city administrator and I said, is there any possible way that the city would waive this fee of $400 so we can get this 
permit and get the sign installed. He said, well, let me check on it and I'll get back to you. Called me back the next day. He said, Pastor, he said, I, I got bad news and I got good news. He said, the bad news is that it's a state mandate and we cannot waive that fee. But the good news is that councilwoman is going to give you a call because she thinks she has a solution to your problem. So she called me and she said, Pastor Guidry, um, I just want to let you know that the, the Glassboro Democratic Committee wants to make a donation to the church for $400 to cover the cost of your fee. And, and we have a favor that we would like to ask of you, which we were going to ask before we were aware that you needed this $400. So we'll praise the Lord. So guess, guess when the check came? After, after my 70th birthday. She came to my house and delivered a check for $400 on yesterday. And then in exchange, and maybe I shouldn't even say in exchange, but in exchange, next week they're going to come and bring a barbecue truck and feed the neighborhood for free. And as I begin to see how God is orchestrating these things, Elder Norman, I'm realizing that my daddy's, my daddy's dreams, his visions are coming to pass in my lifetime. Was that? It was for his seed. El Minister Tim said on the prayer line yesterday morning, he says, I used to ride with Bishop, and Bishop would always say, Brother Timmy, he says, I'm not building this for me. I'm building it for the community. My dad never shared that vision with me. He never shared that vision, that dream, that desire with me. But look at what God is doing. And so when we look at what the scripture is saying, and if we continue, oh, my, my. Is anybody ready for change? See, because that's, what is, that's what's getting ready to happen. There's a, there's a shifting in the atmosphere. And, and God has created this environment where now we as a church can be, wait a minute. We as a church are being recognized by agencies that don't really lend themselves to, we're talking about the democratic committee of Glassboro. Now, we've never had any interaction with one another. But look at them sowing into us. It wasn't something we asked for. It's something that came to us. Oh my. That's only the beginning of what God is getting ready to do in this house. But if he does it here, it's flowing down to your house. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's flowing down to the Sanford residence. It's, it's flowing to the, to the Bennett household. It's, it's flowing to the Hunt's families and to the Williamses. It's, it's flowing to the, to the Mears and the Thomas, the Cooks and the Cars, the, the Hargroves, the, the, the Diggs family. It's flowing. Thank you, Lord. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above what we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. Today is that day. Now is that time. And so I'm going to close with this verse 11, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Verse 12 says, then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me. Amen. That, that's, that's what you were saying about Job. Amen, Sister Daining. After he prayed. 
after, the, after he prayed. Thank you, Lord. Don't just expect it to just fall on your lap without you putting forth some effort. He says, you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away. Somebody say turn away. I will turn away what your captivity. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm free. Thank you, Lord. I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places whether I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into this place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is about to do a new thing in us. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is about to do a new thing. A new thing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Does anybody believe it today? Does anybody believe it today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will do a new thing in you. I will do a new thing in you. Whatever. surgery today the doctor said it all went well but we still don't know fully what caused the problem that she was uh, experiencing she had inflammation all over her body and swelling and joints were swelling up until yesterday they thought it was a bulging disc. She had that MRI after MRI. And they were saying it was a bulging disc. And so she decided to take her to uh, Cooper Hospital where they did the MRI. And they said, no, it's not a bulging disc. It's a tumor. And we need to operate immediately. That's 
spoke with Karen this afternoon. She said the doctor says that after the seven-hour surgery, that the tumor was wrapped around her vertebrae. But thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. About a week and a half, two weeks ago, I don't think Sister Doris would mind me sharing this, but she was on her way to go visit her brother in the hospital. And as she and Deanna were on their way, she received a call from one of her nephews. He saw his cousin walking down the street out of his mind. Let me tell you how God works. What are the, what, what, what's the likelihood of Doris and Diana driving on their way someplace else to see her nephew walking down while you're on the phone with another nephew that's saying, I just saw my cousin and he's talking, he's on the street, out of his head, he's talking, he's not making any sense, I, he's on something, he's on something, I need your help, I need your, we gotta do something. And while they're driving, Deanna says, there he goes. What's the likelihood of that happening if God wasn't in it? But, but look at how God blesses us. She received a call from him a few days ago. <laughs> he said, I'm tiny. I'm myself again. He said, I look in the mirror and look, I gained some weight. He says, I was embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to see me. He said, but I'm back. I'm myself again. Only God. Only God. That's why it's so important for us to never stop praying. Because after we pray, God will show up. God has great things in store for us. Sister Sherry called me, what was that, about a week and a half ago, you, were, you had to rush to go see about your, your son, I believe it was in an accident. Car was totaled, wasn't it? Car was totaled. But, but how's he? He's great. Somebody say he's great. <laughs> Thank you, God. So look at what the Lord is doing. Oh, my, my. See, the blessing in this is this. Here's the blessing. The blessing is that we may not see it happening in the house, but it's happening. It's happening to those who need, oh, glory to God. What did we say in the beginning? That God has us in that place that he has carved out for us so that we can be a witness. So he is giving us witnesses. He is giving us our own cloud of witnesses. Thank you, Lord. With those who have heard the word, and some of them have even known God, but they have walked away for whatever reason. But guess what? God is bringing them back in. Oh, oh my, what did he say? He said in that, that, that 13th verse, uh, that, that 14th verse, he says, and I will gather you from whither I have driven you. Thank you, Lord. So they are also in their spaces of confinement that they might experience the presence of God, that their faith might be renewed, that they will come back to the place Thank you, God. 
a new thing. A new thing. Thank you, God. So, Father, we thank you that whatever we've asked for, and God, whatever those things that are that we've prayed for, ah, yeah, glory, ah, yeah, all all shall be done said the Lord hallelujah God I thank you tonight I thank you Lord God for bringing us together this evening oh God for sharing in this word I thank you tonight God God I thank you Lord for these are people that have gathered God, I pray, Lord God, God, that you are pleased, oh God, with our coming together. That you're pleased, oh God, with our worship, with our praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. God, I ask, Lord, that you will continue to look upon Alicia tonight. God, that you will touch her life, oh Lord God. Father, Yes, Lord. Help her to remember the prayer that Sister Elaine prayed with her weeks ago. The commitment that she made, Lord God, that she wanted a, God, a change in her life, that she wanted a healing. God, that she wanted to commit her ways to you, Lord God. God, bring it to her remembrance. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, when she regains her consciousness, God, we're praying, oh God, that the first words that will come out of her mouth will be, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, that she will not forget to thank you and to praise you, Lord God, for, for bringing her through this surgery, oh God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for restoring her health and her wellness, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For Donnell on today, God. God, thank you, oh God, for restoring that young man, oh God, to his right mind. Yes, Lord God. Father, we pray that the praise will be on his lips. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Father, that he would find himself, God, in a house of worship, seeking your face, oh God, desiring to hear your voice, oh Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Father, you know the needs that exist among us tonight. You know, oh God, you know Elder Norman's desire tonight, his need, oh Lord God, his, that physical need, that medical issue. God, we give it over to you because, God, you are our healer and our deliverer. Yes, ah, glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord God. Mm. God, continue to move. God, you know, oh Lord God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you, Lord God, for Elder Bennett tonight. God, continue to bless him, touch his life. Look on his family, God. Bless his sister tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. God, thank you, Lord God, for the Mears family on tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the Mears, the Thomas family, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Lord God. Have your way. Have your way. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Cook family. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Thank you. Yes, Lord God. Look on the Hargrove family tonight. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Sanford family, God. Look on the Ellis family, God. Thank you, Lord. The Williams family, God. Lord God, you do it. You do it, Lord. And we know that it shall be done. Bless today, God, the Gidry household, God. Thank you, Lord, God. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you, God, for Girk and for Malcolm tonight, Lord God. Bless your name. Yes, Lord, God. God, I thank you, Lord, God, for all those that are part of this ministry that even though they're not with us on tonight, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for the, for the blanket of blessings <laughs> that covers us. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, God. I thank you for the blanket. The blanket, oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, wonderful Savior. Continue to bless and use us, Father, for your glory, for your honor. Oh, bless your name. God, I thank you for those that are online tonight. Lord, I pray that you continue to show yourself mighty in their lives as well. Thank you, Lord. God, and I thank you for our uh, community impact. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. wonderful Savior. Yes, God. Father, as we prepare to leave this place, I pray that you will take us to our several destinations. Thank you, Lord God, for carrying us safely across the highways. Lord God, I pray also, God, for our children those that are involved in camps and other activities, God, during the summer months, those that are just at home, oh God, and God, those that are uh, involved in whatever activities that they're involved in, Lord God, we're praying for your covering, for your safety, Lord God. Watch over our children. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, you do it. God, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. We pray, thank God. Amen. It's about letting everyone know there is a God. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart.